You, you, have, you have my permission to look anywhere in my life, Lord. I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to cling to this as though if I just let that go, I'm just, I'm lost. Oh, no, God, set me free. God, look in my life and work in there. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Praise God. Do you know there's an everlasting way and there's a way that leads to death? You know what man thinks? There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. But there is a way everlasting. I tell you, to put ourselves in God's hands. But by nature, we shrink from this. I mean, we could sing the songs and search me, O God, know my thoughts. And I, and I think in a, in a sense we're, we're sincere, but mm, there's a part of us that's saying, I don't know about that. I'm a little afraid. And somehow David knew not to be afraid. But you know, Jesus came, didn't he? And gave us a real, honest picture of the one David was talking about here. The people that, he, that had the most trouble with Jesus, and that he had the most trouble with, were the religious folks that, that, I'm okay. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Don't you mess with me. But, the, but what about the ones who had so much in their life so much reason to be filled with shame. So much reason to be filled with guilt. How did Jesus treat them? When, they're, when, they're, when the sin of that woman was out there for all the crowd to see, taken in the act of adultery, just completely humiliated before everybody, what was his spirit towards her? That's the same spirit God has toward the secret things in our lives that he wants to deal with and wants to help us with. It's not a disgust. It's not, a, it's not any of the things that the devil would tell us that it is. It's almost like we're afraid if, if, the, if other stuff comes, if all the stuff that's in there comes out, oh God, you're going to be so disgusted with me, you're just going to give up. You don't think God knows about all that? And loves you anyway and sent Jesus anyway to give hope, to give us a place we can go to be clean and to be set free. Praise God. Praise God. In the light of the spirit of Jesus shown so many occasions when he, he showed such compassion to people who were the lowest of the low. Had all the reason in the world to feel hopeless and dirty and ashamed. And he didn't treat them that way. He treated them with kindness and love. He said, go and sin no more. So he, catch the spirit of what David is saying here. God has made himself known to this man in, such a, in a very unique way. I, I doubt there's very many people in the history of the world who've just known God like this. Just had such a sense of his heart. Not just his stuff. Not just his book and his truths and his principles. But I mean to get close to the heart of God so that you really know what he's like and what he's about. And in the light of all of that, he says, Lo, God, search me. God, I'm not, I'm not holding anything back. God, I know there's stuff there that, that can't, be what, can't be what you want. But please come. Please come. Please show me. Of course, if you start praying that, he will. You're going to find a lot of stuff you didn't know was there. I think I've mentioned this before, but there was a a missionary, name escapes me right now, somebody will tell me afterwards, but anyway, there was a young woman who was converted from actually a life of atheism and a party girl about a hundred years ago now. And God really saved her and God called her to be a missionary in China. And she had occasion, was it Isabel Kuhn? I think so. Anyway, she had occasion to... Uh, Travel in those days, you didn't get on a plane and get there in a few hours and have jet lag. You got on a boat and it took weeks. And so she traveled with a party of missionaries. And there happened to be a senior, experienced lady missionary who was returning to China. And so they had a lot of time of fellowship and, you know, what, what, what can I expect kind of thing. And one thing that she notes in her book about her life as a missionary in China is what that lady said. 
The scum of your heart will come out when you get there. And her reaction was, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Here, I've given up my life. I'm going to be a missionary in China. You're talking about the scum of my heart is going to come out? And she just had to be there a little while, and sure enough, she discovered so many things when, when native women would come in and, and not seem to care about all her nice things. Don't move my furniture. Don't mess my, you know, just all these things that she found her heart was attached to and the, and the feelings that would whelm up in her. And we're all that way. We are so attached in a self-centered way to things that have no earthly value, no, no eternal value. And all God has to do is push the right button and you're going to find out some pretty ugly stuff's going to come out. But you know God doesn't despise you. He's not bringing that out to, to rub your nose in it and make you feel ugly and re rejected. He's, he's pulling it out to say, Lord, to say, give it to me. Just give me your heart. I can fix that. I can take care of that. You know, we're talking about revival. This is a key. Revival is not just some thing that gets dumped on us. This is individual people coming into a relationship with a holy God. That's something deeper than they've known. Every real revival in history has been marked by a spirit of repentance, of conviction. But I am so glad that God knows how to convict without humiliating and, and grinding us into the ground. But oh, where there's a people who are willing to face what they are and, and just come to him. Humbling themselves in his hands and say, Lord, take my heart, fill me, change me. That's where God's presence comes and dwells. And notice what David's focus is here. He's talking about his relationship with God, but he doesn't say search so and so. I'm very annoyed with the way they've been lately. I don't like the circumstances. I don't like the situation. I don't like, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. God, fix it. David's focus, and he had certainly had plenty around him, didn't he? But David's focus was, search me. You know, there's not one of us that can control everything around us and fix it. But there's one thing we can do. We can come to God and say, God, fix me. That's the need. Oh, God, search me. Know my heart. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. I just say this morning, that's what, I, I see that in, as the need in me. And I'll tell you, if we are willing to come to God this way, I believe there's going to be more and more power and more and more faith in our praying for others. And there's going to be a different spirit, maybe, than there sometimes is in our praying about others. There's going to be less of a spirit of, what's wrong with them? Why don't they get it? And, oh God, they're caught by a power they don't understand. They need your help. God, just like I need your help, they need your help. Oh, God, be merciful to them as you've been merciful to me. There's a different spirit. I tell you, we're going to see God answer prayer in a greater and greater way in our lives if we come to him like this. Do you believe that? Is this just, you know, a nice little talk or is this truth? I believe it is. God, give us the grace. Take away our fear. I'll guarantee this, this place, if we were to confess it, is full of people who are afraid to do what we sing in the song, let go and let God have his wonderful way. We know it's true, but somehow we just, yeah. God help us. I'll tell you, we have a God who's wonderful. And the more we know about him, the more we want to be near him, not to run from him. And he wants you to know him that way and to love him the way David expresses here. And I believe as we... Let him have our hearts. He's going to change us. And we're going to see the difference in our lives. And we're going to see the difference in the church. Praise God.